Hey everyone, Nick here and welcome back to GameCube, and welcome back to our Poppy Playtime character concept series. So in today's video, the character we're looking into is Teddy. So we're going to go into their location, their gameplay mechanics, their backstory, and all that good stuff as well. As always, I will just state that everything I say in these videos isn't linked to the overall Poppy Playtime universe or lore. This is just a fun what-if scenario and a cool creepy story we get to tell, and we hope you enjoy. And as always, do be sure to subscribe to GamerTube as it helps out a lot and it's greatly appreciated. It also keeps you up to date with all the videos that we post. Alrighty, well, let's get into the character concept of Teddy. So in our previous video, our protagonist came face to face with the dangerous robot, Grabbot. Grabbot had their own grab pack just like the player. Our protagonist needed the green grab hand to enter through the new area. But first, they needed to defeat the intimidating Grabbot. After outsmarting them and finally defeating them, then the player could finally move on to the next area. And this new area was the Archive. The Archive was a special area where Playtime Co. would store most of their oldest creations, patents, and possessions. Included in these old archived items was one of Playtime Co.'s very first creations. And this dusty old toy was simply known as Teddy. So, not many people know, but the very first toy that Elliot Ludwig designed was that of a simplistic stuffed bear named Teddy. Playtime Co. was mainly famous for Poppy and her other toy friends. But it was Teddy that started it all. Teddy was your typical stuffed brown bear. He had two arms, two legs, fluffy ears, and two black button eyes. This adorable stuffed bear was in production for a few years but eventually got discontinued due to the popularity of stuffed bears declining and the rise of children's dolls. Apparently, the original Teddy is located somewhere in the archive. Well, at least that was the rumour. As the player walks through the archive, they notice it's quite different to all the other areas in the factory. If anything, it looked quite similar to Poppy's area at the end of Chapter 1. As they walk through the many corridors, they see bookshelves, blueprints, and old Playtime Co. toy magazines. Surely there's a way out of this old, strange area. As they continue to explore, they couldn't help but feel like something was watching them. Then again, after everything they've been through, who could blame them? After searching through the many rooms and corridors, they come across what looks to be the exit. It's a strange door with an insert in the middle. The insert space looks to be in the shape of a teddy bear. Near the door is another note. They pick it up and read it out. To unlock the door, place the item that started it all. They assumed they were looking for a teddy bear of some sorts. Maybe the first one that Playtime Co. ever designed. So the player sets out to find the teddy bear and place it in the door. As they explore further, they come across a strange looking room. It seems to be filled with the original blueprints for all the other toys at the factory. The room is filled with them. In the middle of the room is also a bright screen projector. In this puzzle segment, the player needs to grab a specific number of blueprints and place them on the projector. They can layer multiple different blueprint sheets to make different shapes. The player needs to match the shape that's on the projector board. With the blueprints, they would need to orient them around and make the specific shape. Once they've completed the shape, the projector screen splits in half and reveals a secret room. The corridor leading down to this room is dark and covered in cobwebs. The player has a bad feeling about this room, but they have no choice but to check it out. As they walk down, they can hardly see a thing. They reach the end of the dim corridor and come to a small room with no other doors. In this room stands a single chair. Sitting in this chair is a stuffed bear. Above the chair hangs a photo of Elliot Ludwig himself. Perhaps this was one of Elliot's most prized possessions. As the player goes to grab the stuffed bear, large deadly claws come piercing through the wall. They almost got the player. The player needs to dodge the sharp claws that keep piercing through the walls. When the claws stop stabbing through the walls towards the player, something lets out a disturbing sound. It seems to be over for now. 
What on earth could that have been? Once again, our protagonist didn't want to stick around to find out. They grab the stuffed teddy and make their way back towards the insert door. As they walk back through the long dim hallway back to the projector room, the claws return once more. The player needs to be careful not to get stabbed by the dangerous claws in the narrow hallway. They need to judge when the mysterious creature is going to stab through the wall again. The attacks can happen either in front of them or behind them. The player needs to slowly make their way through. If they get too confident and run through the corridor, they would surely get struck by the claws. Once they've safely made their way through the corridor, then it's time to head back to the insert door. They make their way back and they place the teddy inside the door. They hear the door unlock. As they go to walk through, the claws tear through the door and the teddy bear. The claws rip open the door and the wall. Standing there before the player is the true form of Teddy. This creature has large disturbing legs that have torn through their fabric skin. Their soft fluffy paws have been pierced with their deadly bone-like claws. And their mouth is separated in half, revealing multiple sharp jagged teeth. The twisted creature lets out a frightening roar. Monster Teddy starts moving towards the player. The player needs to make a run for it before this terrifying creature devours them. So as Monster Teddy slowly chases the player, they need to figure out how they can get past them and loop back around towards the door. The player rushes through the corridors trying to find another way around. If the player looks carefully, they can see that some of the paintings on the walls are hanging a little different. They need to use their grab pack to knock the paintings off the wall and reveal a hidden grab pack switch. They press it and a secret door opens up. They walk through and find themselves back at the destroyed exit. But unfortunately for the player, the door seems to be tied up with some sort of thread. It seems impossible to cut. They notice that the thread is connected to the monster teddy as they come back around for the player. It seems the only thing that could possibly cut this thread would be Monster Teddy's sharp claws. So in this final boss segment, the player needs to keep looping around and luring Monster Teddy over to the doorway. Once there, they would need to dodge their attack at the last second and have Teddy slash through the thread. The player would need to do this loop three times in order to cut through the thread that's blocking the doorway. But if the player lets Teddy get too close, then that would definitely be the end of them. Once the player has completed the third loop and Teddy has slashed open the doorway, the player is finally able to exit. They now find themselves in an open factory area once again. Monster Teddy walks through the destroyed doorway into the factory area. It seems this creature won't give up following the player. They need to deal with them here and now. They notice there's still a strand of thread hanging off their body. Maybe they could use this to their advantage. So in this final boss battle segment, the player needs to use their grab pack to grab the strand of thread and unravel Teddy's body. If only they could hook up the thread to a machine. They notice behind them is a spinning drill press. The player grabs the thread and ties it to the drill. They turn it on and watch as it grabs onto the thread and spins. Now the player just needs to wait for the drill to do its work. In the meantime, the player needs to run around and dodge the oncoming attacks from Monster Teddy. As time goes on, they notice Teddy's body is starting to tear away. Their fabric is starting to unravel and revealing their disturbing insides. Dark slime starts pouring out of all their rips and tears on Teddy's body. A little longer and they'd be fully unraveled. As the player continues to circle around Teddy and dodge their attacks, they finally can't move anymore as they are fully unraveled. Teddy collapses into a large pile of dark slime and goo. The player has finally defeated this twisted creature. 
so now they need to figure out where exactly were they in this new area. And more importantly, what other dangerous creatures will be waiting there for them. So, I think the Teddy and the Monster Teddy would be a great addition to the Poppy Playtime roster. I think it would be creepy to see such an innocent looking toy turned into such a monstrous looking creature. They would definitely be a frightening character to go up against and would totally make the player feel very uneasy, that's for sure. Alrighty everyone, well that's all we have for today's video, I hope you enjoyed, and if you did, please consider leaving a like, commenting, and subscribing, as it helps out a lot and it's greatly appreciated. Also, comment down below what you thought of Teddy, and what you'd like to see going forward. Alrighty everyone, well, until the next video, I'll catch you later, bye.